Cougar fans, Joe Pott with you. It's another edition of the Cougar Connection. I'm back at Cordy Stadium, and as you can see, we are physically distanced today as we talk some men's soccer with you on the newest edition of the Cougar Connection. My pleasure to welcome in the head men's soccer coach here at SIUE, Kale Wasserman. And coach, it certainly feels like a nice crisp fall morning, but this is anything but a typical fall for you and your team. Yeah, with the cameras out here, I feel like it's an interview for a pregame, uh, fall atmosphere, beautiful weather, happy to be outside, and uh, excited to be training with our guys right now. We talked back in the spring and when things were getting shut down then, kind of about how things were going to change and, and what they might look like. As you approached the late summer and this fall as was normal um, or close to it as we could get, I'm sure there was some inclination for you and for your players that there might be a suspension of competition, uh, but you kind of had to approach this as a regular fall at the start, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in March when we were sent home, we thought, hey, maybe it's a couple weeks, maybe it's till the end of the semester, then the announcement started coming, but to our guys' credit, we, I feel like we fully used that spring and early summer to to do some things, and obviously Zoom has become more and more prominent all over the world, but a lot of team team meetings, a lot of culture building where we couldn't be on the field, we took that time to build some relationships, to understand each other, to um, really firm up our identity, identity as a program. And then as we went into the summer, we had to really prepare the guys mentally that they needed to be fit and ready to go August 12th or whenever the, the first day of preseason was, even though we always knew that there was a chance um, you know, for, for a season suspension um, and, 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 and a hope that if that happened, that it would be moved to the spring. So, you know, mentally, I think our guys were prepared for both situations and, and credit to them. We have a lot of new guys, but we also have such a great core group of returners that I think helped kind of uh, bring everyone together when we couldn't do it physically. They stayed connected uh, digitally and text, Zoom, um, WhatsApp groups and, and phone calls. And they really brought everyone together. And I think when the news came, you know, right before preseason, you know, I think the next step for us is we just hoped that we could train because it was such a big time moment for us to develop. And, and quite honestly, with losing the spring, this fall has been a blessing. I know there's there's programs all over the country that may not be as, as fortunate as, as us right now. We've been very fortunate that we've been able to train, um, you know, with, with the necessary precautions. We're doing symptom evaluations, temperature checks. We've had a few... Uh, few few scenarios where we've had to be really careful but uh, for the most part we're really happy with how it's going and at the end of the day although we would love to be playing right now we would love to be recruiting on the weekends and scouting opponents it's also been such a great opportunity for uh, not only our players but our, our coaching staff to develop and take the foot off the gas on the weekends a little bit and watch more video and, and watch more pro games and, and do things where normally in the fall we'd be on the road prepping for a conference game or, or uh, you know, a, big, a big home match. And, and now we've really taken this opportunity to put ourselves in a better situation come, come the spring and hopefully be ready for a, a great spring season. Give me an idea of your players and how they have adjusted and how they have kind of pivoted that focus to instead of being in season, instead of prepping for, you know, a game or two games during the week, now you're sort of working on those things that you missed out on in the spring. How, how has that been for your for your guys? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the mental side of this has been huge. And to, to, again, to our guys' credit, I think we have a really humble, mature group, um, you know, it, Seven, we have guys from the age of 17 all the way up to 23. Um, so so when, when the news was coming, you never knew, knew how they were going to take it. But really credit to them. They've uh, been able to adapt. They've been able to understand that, you know, we have to think of others and how we act and wear masks and socially distance. And sometimes sometimes we're able to train semi-fully. We've got the neck gaiters that, that we wear at practice. Look cool, nice fashionable neck gaiter. Um, you know, for certain precautions when our guys are um, a little closer, but for the most part, we're able to spread guys out and um, have them have them really taking this semester to develop. And, and again, our guys are were desperate to play, but they also understood that there's a, a greater good that that we need to that we need to think about, and it's not just about us. Um, it's it's about our community. It's about the messages that we're sending to others. And our guys have really been great in balancing that, where they're they're developing where they can, but they're also taking taking a step back when they have to and saying, hey, you know what? Maybe today today we have to spread some things out and um, and and really focus on other things. So our guys have done a great job, and and I think 
we've learned a lot of really good lessons about leadership and, and um, humbling ourselves. And, and it, it's really, I'm really fortunate to be a part of a program like this with such a great group of guys that understand that. You mentioned your roster a couple of times. Let's dig into that roster just a little bit. And um, certainly two names that people have gotten used to seeing here is Jorge Gonzalez and Lachlan McLean. They've been really the backbone of the offense, both of them uh, thriving at the next level. But because of that, you've got to obviously have some guys ready to come in and kind of step into that role a little bit. What do you like about this year's roster? Well, like you said, it's obviously uh, two, two massive losses, but I could not be more proud and happy for those two guys. I mean, Jorge scoring goals in the USL Championship. He's got something like seven goals in the last five games for, for Portland Timbers, too. Uh, Lockie's down in Greenville. His team is in first place in the league. He's scoring goals, getting assists. And honestly, it, it, it's tough, you know, just to get those opportunities to 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 get a trial with with teams at the next level but they've done such a great job to prepare themselves and are executing at a high level um you know even before them you know we have guys like christian valeski who just scored the other day austin ledbetter uh playing at the next level matt polster came back from from scotland and, and is now playing in mls with uh new england revolution and doing very well so we're really happy for all of our alums playing at the next level but certainly those two guys will be missed um, not only good players, but uh, big personalities within the team. But I could not be more excited about the guys that have um, really stepped up as returners. You know, we had a really big uh, senior class. I think 11, 10, 11 guys left after last fall. Uh, but so many returners. And I, it's tough for me to name guys because we have so many of them. But, uh, you know, we, we named Jake Meyer and Luis Martuel, Terrell, excuse me, as our, as our two captains, and they've done a phenomenal job, but so many others, Jack Edwards, Stephen Bebas, Kelby Phillips, um, Oscar Lenz, there's so many that have, Vincent Jackson is a really exciting one up front who, who will take on a bigger role in our attack and, and who is a, a feisty, dynamic, competitive guy up front and can play wide. So we have quite a few returners that are gonna help carry that load, but also we've brought in a really diverse group positionally and, and culturally um, of new guys, you know, from go from all the way from the back to goalkeeper, defender, and all the way to the front. Uh, a guy like Alex Pontoni who came from Italy and who's been scoring a lot of goals in training. So I think it's going to be a really good mix of new guys and returners. And, you know, we also brought in six transfers last January to help alleviate such a big senior class leaving. So for me, yes, we want to be playing games right now like everyone else, but, but we also understood that the reasons behind the delay and what it's given us is an opportunity to use this fall to integrate everybody with such a su such a massive amount of, of new guys you know between the six that joined in January and the six that joined in August we have 12 new guys from last fall so we've used this opportunity to really uh, integrate everyone and, and try to get everyone really locked into our identity and we're excited for when the the ball starts rolling and with outside competition in the spring to to see what our new guys can do. But again, like I said, we have such a great group of returners that are going to help carry that load. Coach, you talked about the roster being diverse and folks from different countries, different areas from within this country. Mm -hmm. But, you know, soccer is such an international game, and you have been able to take advantage of that. Give me an idea of how that's been. You, you've already said kind of using the WhatsApp and using Zoom and kind of connecting these players, but it's really nice to be able to kind of draw from those other cultures isn't it yeah absolutely i mean look we're we're here in southern illinois and and the base of our team is always going to have some great players from from the st louis area the metro east area the surrounding areas we have guys like i said jack edwards eric bauke stephen bebas from st louis you know guys from the outskirts and and the periphery like kelby phillips um from springfield we have a couple peoria guys so really you know, we, we never want to lose that base and, and such a great soccer history in this area and s such great talent in this area. But also for us to extend our reach and bring in some uh, diversity of, of personality, some diversity of style, some uh, players that really played at high levels abroad. Um, you know, it gives our, our team not only a diverse group of players, but such a positive experience. I, I had a similar experience as a player where I played with uh, guys from Ecuador, England, um, Peru um, and, and for our guys to have players and teammates and roommates now from Germany, Spain, England, Australia, it, it really gives our guys not only 
a higher level of soccer at times, and, and I'm not comparing Europeans to St. St. Louis area guys or Illinois guys, Wisconsin, Midwest, but just it, it gives a different look. If a guy grew up in a different environment, if a guy grew up in a different culture, and it's such a great cultural experience as well where they're learning from each other. Um, you know, we have guys, we've had guys, you know, S Sander, who was here last year, used to cook sourdough bread from back home in his native country. And we have guys doing things like that and celebrating holidays that maybe our guys were not as familiar with. So it really, more than anything, it, it does build us a great soccer base. And, and if we can find the right guys to fill those key roles, it's, it's an amazing on-field environment, but even more so off the field, um, the relationships built and the experiences that these guys, uh, not only for our guys that are from this side of the pond, but the players that are coming over from across the pond to have an experience over here to play and get an education at a high level um, and have that cultural interchange as well. It's, uh, it's been really positive for our players. Well, Coach, I think you've got a future in TV because it's time for us to go to our first package of the day. And we're going to introduce you to some of those internationals here with the SIUE men's soccer team as we go across the pond. My name is Luis Marturel Cabré. I'm from Barcelona, Spain, and I was born in 1999. My name is Oscar Maxim Lenz, and I'm from Germany, Hamburg. I'm Max Brolson, and I'm from Manchester, England. I'm Alex Pontoni. I'm from Italy, from Udine, a little, a little city close to Venice. What do you miss the most? Uh, obviously my family. I would say my family is a big impact in my, in my world every day. So I just make sure that I keep in touch with them. I talk to them, I communicate with them to make sure that that pain is, is smaller. Of obviously my family and my friends. Um, that's the main thing that I miss from home. And also like I live in a big city, so there's a lot more going on, I would say. Like uh, it's everything's way closer. So like here you have to go in a car, you have to drive somewhere to do something and there it's like I'm going on the street, step out the door, uh, step outside my door and there are my friends. Uh, my family, like, I'm very I'm very closely knit with my family. Um, we do a lot of stuff together. Um, so my family and friends are the main thing that I'm missing right now. What food do you miss? Um, I miss like like a British, like an English breakfast, like a full English, like eggs, bacon, like bacon butties. Nobody knows what they are here. so. I miss those, um, and my dad makes a really good like lamb dinner on a Sunday with Yorkshire puddings. Like I miss that as well. With my brother, I grew up since I was a kid with him, and sharing the same moments, same same schools, same uh, teams as well, and the friends because uh, you know friends are part of your life. So yeah. What's your favorite thing about SIUE? I would say the resources. Obviously, back in Spain, we don't have the universities that have sports as well as here. So having the resources and opportunity to play, meet so many international players, meet so many international people, I think it's great and awesome for my development. Uh, what I like a lot is like the community um, at all, like overall. Um, all the people are welcoming you and they're really interested in you and want to know things about you and um, they care about you. Um, the lads, like I like the people, um, really nice. Um, and I'm getting on, I'm making a lot of new friendships here, like, I'm enjoying that. I would say definitely the campus because in the, it's in the middle of the nature, I love nature and uh, of course we have a very good uh, team so the teammates are, are great and also the coaching staff is, uh, is amazing. Since COVID have you been able to go home? No unfortunately not, I tore my ACL about a year ago so I would, because Spain closed down real quick I wanted to stay here because I still had the opportunity to run and do some stuff for my recovery because I was five months in. Um, so we couldn't travel? Uh, from this, from from my home country to the United States, so I had to travel uh, to Turkey, stayed 14 days in Turkey, and then went to the United States, so I can move around the travel man. Um, so it was a big adjustment. Hola papa, hola mama. No es volia dir vos que us estimo molt, que us trobo molt a faltar i ens veurem a ens veurem aviat a l'hivern. No les amo fort i us estimo molt. Un petó. Uh, and all my friends, my uh, my my mother, my papa. Um, ich vermisse euch sehr. Ich vermisse meinen Bruder Felix. Ich hoffe, dir geht es gut. I wish you good in Bremen. I miss my friends Halil, Cesar, Erdem, Luis, Stepan, Besat. I miss you, young. I hope that you will see you soon. And yeah, you are here. Uh, yeah, I hope you are good. Watch. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Uh, I hope you're, you're both well. And Chloe, I hope the football is going well. I know we're keeping in contact a lot every day, um, but I miss you all dearly, and I hope you're staying safe. And I'm looking forward to being back home at Christmas with you all. Lots of love. 
Ciao mamma, ciao papà, ciao Thomas, nonostante ci sentiamo quotidianamente, mi mancate tanto, vi mando un grande abbraccio. E ciao Federico, Fabio e Davide, vi voglio bene nonostante la distanza, mi raccomando, eh, io devi fa bene, chi sta al campionato. Great look there at the internationals here on the SIUE men's soccer team. And now we pivot to right here close to home. And I'm joined by Jack Edwards, a junior on this year's team. And Jack, born and bred in the St. Louis area, high school at CBC out in West County, and now a junior, as I said, right here on the men's soccer team. And Jack, welcome. I know that you've done plenty of interviews like this and had a chance to talk about the St. Louis tradition, the rich soccer tradition within St. Louis. I, I guess we'll start with, um, you know, what was that like growing up in St. Louis and, and being a part of that soccer tradition? Yeah, I mean, growing up, um, I feel like all my friends played soccer. Everybody you knew played soccer. So having the coaches, the players, um, just the environment that you grew up in, um, I mean, it's just it's a soccer city. Um, as you can tell with the MLS even coming to St. Louis, um, I think everybody you talk to has played soccer once in their life in St. Louis. So being a part of that and being able to make it out um, is really special to me. With the, as you said, with the MLS coming and the sort of profile being heightened, um, I think more people now are kind of figuring that out. Something that, that you knew that a lot of the players knew, but the club competition is strong. Mm -hmm. The high school soccer is strong. And obviously you've got soccer tradition here at SIUE. What kind of, I mean, is that part of what led you to coming here and playing for the Cougars? Yeah, so growing up in St. Louis, you hear about SLU, you hear about SIUE, um, Missouri State, you just hear about all the close colleges. And for me, um, I have a little sister, so I am I wanted to be around her. I wanted to stay close to home. And it's just coincidence that about half my family went to school. My parents, uh, uh, grandparents, aunts and uncles all came to SIUE. So when the um, when the opportunity arose, I just knew I had to take it. You have gotten a chance to be a part of the resumption of the bronze boot game, which was huge in this town and in this area in the 70s and the 80s. Went away for a long time. They have brought that series back a couple of years ago. Last year back at SIUE for the first time in 30 years. How cool has it been to be a part of that series, that game? Yeah, I mean, past two years has been our biggest game um, fan-wise. So I think just with... Especially growing up in St. Louis, you know, Slew's full of St. Louis guys, so it's fun to play people you actually know. Um, you know, the fans, seeing people in the stands that you don't usually see. Um, it's just the, the hype that surrounds that game is really special to be a part of, and uh, I'm looking forward to it in the spring. Let's talk about just the atmosphere here. You, you talked about the crowds and, yep. and obviously game days, um, something we all wish we were getting ready for here this fall. Um, that's obviously not the case, but what's that been like for you? Because that's obviously not the case, and I'm sure you see it as you travel the country and you play these other schools, that the support is so strong here for SIUE. Yeah, um, I mean, not having it now, it's weird, but – you know, with the film that we watch and the previous games, it just gets you so excited for the spring and uh, next season. Um, you know, there's not a lot you can do right now other than, um, you know, just train, be with the guys, you know, build that core and just hope for the best in the spring and just keep watching uh, previous film, um, previous games that you played in. Just, it just, it's just getting you excited. Is there anything better than – you know, the sun going down over the bluff and you're walking out, uh, you guys coming out of the, the locker room from underneath and you're walking across the track and, and you see that big crowd. Is there anything better like on a Saturday night? There's nothing better. <laughs> nothing better. Jack Edwards is with us here as we continue on the Cougar Connection and he is one of the local products here on the SIUE men's soccer team, a, a tradition that extends way back and all the way to the beginning of this soccer program into the 60s. And, and Jack, as you now are becoming part of that legacy and part of the group that has come through here. And like we said, back with the bronze boot and things like that. What kind of things are you hoping to accomplish in your last couple of years here with the team? The, the biggest thing that I personally want to accomplish is I want to be here for a championship. You know, um, you, know you start with the Mac, moving to the MVC, but I just want to have a championship um, while I'm here for my four years. Uh, personally, I want to score a goal, um, but I mean, team-wise, it's it's. I just want the what's best for the team. You know, I want a championship. I want us to make the tournament, and I just want to feel. Um, I just want to feel that excitement that a lot of other teams feel that I haven't 
yet to um, encounter yet. So, What are your impressions of the way this team is put together and the roster that you have and, and what can fans expect come spring? Yeah, I mean, we have a very diverse group. Um, I think what makes this team special compared to the past years I've been here is um, – we're, we we can all offer so much more than just our positions that we're listed as. I mean, we have right backs that can play forwards, wing uh, wingers. We have center backs and play midfielders. It's just overall this team can adapt to anything, and I'm really excited looking forward to next season. Well, Jack, we're looking forward to next season as well. Appreciate your time today. Jack talked about wanting to score a goal, but what about keeping the ball out of the goal? Coming up right now, let's take a look at goalie versus goalie. Yeah, Beautiful Cordy Stadium, Joe Pop with you on the Cougar Connection, and that was a, a good look at a couple of good goalkeepers for the SIU men's soccer team. And I welcome in one of our Cougar assistants, Daniel Brennan. And first off, Daniel, welcome to your first full-time season here with SIU men's soccer. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, it's uh, it feels nice to to know that I had an impact as a volunteer, and and there's that faith and trust in me to now step in full time and continue my work with the goalkeepers. We're going to talk a little bit about that work with the goalkeepers. I want to talk first about you grew up down the street from SIUE, so the tradition and the soccer history in this institution is nothing new to you. That's correct. Yeah, I uh, was about five minutes from campus growing up. Um, and with with my time in the academy down here for, for Scott Gallagher, we actually trained and, and played a lot of games on Cordy. So this, this facility, this stadium is, has been a part of me growing up. Um, you know, obviously being able to ride my bike down and be able to see games, that was a very influential part of, of my, my time growing up and, and my development as a, a goalkeeper. You left the area to go play college soccer, including three seasons at Louisville. Um, what brought you back? What draws someone back to Edwardsville in the St. Louis area? Well, I think the the St. Louis area, including the Metro East, has, has had a very rich history in soccer, uh, producing quite a bit of talent. Um, you know, when, when you look at, at goalkeepers like John Berner, who, who have played here, um, Kent Coverness, who played here as well, um, you know, then you also have the goalkeeper coaches and Tim Kelly, uh, 
um, and Brian Jones. So this area has a rich history. Um, and that was one of the reasons that brought me back and, and got me excited about moving home. Um, the other part of that was sometimes things are a little bit easier at home. You have family around who, who can help out when you need them, uh, especially when you get into a coaching gig that is full time and you're, you're spending a lot of time uh, away from home um, where maybe you do need some help. So that was, that's, that was also another big draw. Um, and then finally, you know, coming home to a uh, campus that I grew up right next to, has a good soccer history. I know this facility um, and I know the community. And I think that was uh, another big, big reason for me to come home was I already had that, that little bit of influence and ties to the community at large. You don't get, uh, and I mentioned this when I was talking with Jack Edwards, you don't get necessarily the same kind of support, uh, fan support and institutional support at all schools that SIUE enjoys with regards to soccer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I think the the fans who come um, are rowdy, to say the least, uh, especially That's a good during thing. big games. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, that was something that growing up, you noticed there were always fans here um, throughout the previous coach. Um, he really grew things, and, you know, there's pictures all throughout Cordy, throughout the locker room of – those huge fans where there's a couple thousand people here lined across the track. Um, so in terms of the fans and the support, I, I think it is unique um, with us being kind of the, the marquee sport and not having football. I think that opens things up for us to, to really bring in some fans who maybe at another institution wouldn't be so involved um, and, and so emphatic about coming out and giving us that support. Daniel Brennan Cougar, assistant coach, is with us. And, and, Coach, your focus is the goalkeepers, as we've mentioned a little bit. Uh, what kind of things are you, A, looking for in a Cougar goalkeeper? And, and, B, what are you focusing on when it comes to training? Is it simply reflex, reaction, positioning, all three? So I'll, I'll address the, the first question. Uh, what am I looking for in a goalkeeper? Uh, it's, it's funny. These days, the goalkeepers are usually the most athletic person mm -hmm. on the field. Uh, so first and foremost, we, we look at the athleticism. Um, you know, are they quick? Are, can they dive? Can they go up for crosses? Are they big and strong and willing to go into that contact and, and uh, be athletic and, and be able to make those plays? Uh, so that's a big part is the athleticism. Uh, technique is also obviously something that we look at. Uh, goalkeeping is a, a, a different position in terms of we are a lot less involved. Um, so our mistakes, our technical mistakes, tend to show a bit more than maybe some of the field players. Um, and uh, the last thing that we look in for goalkeepers is, is just their personality. You know, are, are they a person who wants to win? Are they a person who is a leader on and off the field? Somebody that guys trust behind them. Um, I think the personality has a, a big role in, in what we look for. I, I don't think people realize that part of it because – a goalkeeper can actually change the way that you play defense and that your team runs from back to front, can't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there there have been some major strides in terms of goalkeeping and the position and how it's played over you know the last 20 years. Now you get you get goalkeepers like Manuel Neuer, who's flying off of his line, um, which is something that you didn't used to see a whole lot, um, and that's obviously changed the way that that people look at goalkeepers. Um, you look at, at goalkeepers like Ederson or Pickford over in the EPL who their distribution is, is very, very good, and that then adds another element. They're able to, to spring somebody in on a counterattack and, and provide an assist sometimes. Um, so, yes, the, the goalkeeping position, how it's evolved over the last you know, 20 years, from my perspective, being a right. bit younger, but even, even longer than that, you know, they, they used to be able to pass the ball back to the goalkeeper and he could pick it up. Um, so it, it's been a changing and evolving position for quite some time. Um, and I think over the last 20 or so years, there's there's been a dramatic shift in terms of what it allows you to do tactically um, and how it maybe changes, like you were saying, how you defend or how you might attack. Daniel Brennan, I've appreciated a chance to talk to you and get to know you. and. Man, we certainly look forward to a great spring here at Cordy Stadium. Absolutely.
And that'll do it for us from Cordy Stadium. I hope you've enjoyed this look at SIUE Cougar men's soccer. I certainly thank our guests today, Kale Wasserman, Jack Edwards, Daniel Brennan, all of our international players, our goalkeepers. We've had some fun. Hope you have too. Join us for the next episode of the Cougar Connection. I'm Joe Pott.